Adding a new puppy to a family is a delight. It is exciting to see how the puppy fits into the canine structure you may already have. It is a pleasure to watch the puppy discover all the things around your home and yard that you take for granted. It is stimulating to watch the puppy grow into the standard schnauzer you have wished for, knowing that a wonderful show career is just around the corner. But what can happen to cause all these hopes and dreams to turn to nightmares is what this educational documentary is about. It is about canine epilepsy and what it is like to live with a standard schnauzer with primary inherited epilepsy. It is about our standard schnauzer, Corey, who was born April 4, 1994. Epilepsy is a result of cerebral dysfunction. Seizures, fits, and convulsions are synonyms for irregular brain spasms that begin suddenly and end spontaneously. Many people will interchange these words to mean the same thing. But what we are going to address in this video is what happens when a sudden and uncontrolled burst of neurologic activity occurs in the brain. In a normal standard schnauzer, or any dog for that matter, nerve cells in the brain produce a true, predictable electrical current. At any one time, certain nerve cells are active in communicating with certain other nerve cells in a very specific pattern. In an epileptic standard, a sudden, excessive, uncontrolled discharge of electrical energy in a group of brain cells causes a seizure. In simpler terms, we think of it as a short circuit in the brain. Depending on the parts of the brain affected by the burst of electrical activity, the signs that the standard shows during a seizure may vary. No two seizures are ever alike. When the behavioral areas of the brain are affected, we will see changes in behavior. Involvement of the visceral centers cause the standard to urinate, salivate, defecate, or vomit. Muscle spasms, twitches, and paddling may occur if the motor areas of the brain are being affected. The centers controlling the alert state of the dog will cause loss of consciousness, disorientation, and hysteria. Whether or not an individual schnauzer has a seizure in response to a given stimulus depends on its own particular seizure threshold. Heredity plays a part in determining this threshold in the standard schnauzer. It is felt that certain substances called neurotransmitters are probably not in the proper chemical balance, causing the nerves not to behave in a normal coordinated fashion. Canine epilepsy has strong genetic implications and should be of great concern to the breeder. Any breed of dog may become an epileptic for acquired reasons such as a brain trauma or poisoning. However, in certain breeds, epilepsy is a more common problem. These breeds would be regarded as having a high incidence of genetic epilepsy, or at least a tendency to epilepsy. Beagles and Keys Huns have been studied carefully, and it is believed that the exact genetic mechanism of epilepsy is known. It is generally accepted that genetic epilepsy occurs in other breeds, such as the German Shepherds, St. Bernards, all Schnauzers, Cocker Spaniels, Irish Setters, all Poodles, all Traverns, Norwich Terriers, and Brittanies. Other breeds suspected of having epilepsy include the Pekingese, Shetland Sheepdogs, Siberian Huskies, Dachshunds, Alaskan Malamutes, Old English Sheepdogs, and Wired Hair Fox Terriers. Let us take a look at a short seizure from beginning to end of our subject, Cory. This will last approximately 1 minute and 40 seconds. During this time, I will describe a textbook account of how a typical seizure might progress. As stated earlier, no two seizures look exactly alike, and a seizure is not always easy to recognize. Corey may become nervous or agitated, sensing that something abnormal is about to happen. Some dogs may even seek out their owners, looking for help and reassurance. This is called the pre-ictal period. Corey begins to tremble. Her eyes glaze over and she loses touch with her environment, appears blind, and will not respond to her owner's voice or touch. The trembling becomes more severe as she stiffens. Corey falls, usually on her side, and begins to paddle her legs and convulse, sometimes violently. The teeth might be clenched or she may chomp her jaws as the seizure progresses. Often she salivates and appears not to breathe. This entire stage, the ictal stage, usually lasts less than two minutes. The next stage is called the post-ictal period. Corey begins to recover, but a varying degree of neurological signs will persist. Commonly, she remains blind for some time after seizure because the part of the brain concerned with vision is one of the last parts to return to full activity. She often pants and seems disoriented. Some dogs sleep for a long period following a seizure. The post-ictal stage usually lasts for less than an hour, but can be considerably longer, up to two days. Seizures are either referred to as pettit mal seizures, meaning that they are confined to one part of the body, or grand mal seizures affecting the entire body. 
our subject always experiences grand mal seizures. And epilepsy can appear at any time. It is difficult to place an age on its first occurrence. It may show up anywhere from six months to five years or even older. Epilepsy is commonly broken up into two categories, primary or secondary. Primary epilepsy, also known as idiopathic, genetic, true, or inherited, is probably caused by a chemical defect within the brain cells, as mentioned earlier. Researchers believe primary canine epilepsy has strong genetic mechanisms. Secondary epilepsy, also known as acquired, symptomatic, or not inherited, is the result of damage to the brain cells from one or more of an innumerable causes, such as head trauma or toxin ingestion. Cori seizures are the result of primary inherited epilepsy, which is what we will address. We will always remember the NBA playoffs of 1995 and the Longmont shows in Colorado. Cori had her first set of seizures during this time. It was June 1, 1995, and she was just 14 months old. We first worked very closely with our veterinarian, Dr. Scott Carpenter, who owns and operates Arvada West Veterinary Hospital in Arvada, Colorado. Dr. Scott did all the initial workup, including thorough physical examinations, meticulous reviews of Corey's medical history, plus numerous blood work and urinalysis tests. The purpose of the complete blood work was to reveal signs of infection or inflammation. It would help to investigate metabolic causes of her seizures by testing for biochemical markers of liver, kidney, glucose, and electrolyte disturbances. In addition, if there was any possibility of exposure to poisons, heavy metals, or lead, the blood samples would reveal toxic levels. Your analysis work would reflect kidney, liver, or other metabolic abnormalities. All of these tests continued to come back perfectly normal each time a check was performed. We placed Cori on phenobarbital, administered twice a day, to help control the seizures. When the seizures continued, Dr. Scott referred us to Dr. Patricia Lutkin at the Neurological Center for Animals in Lakewood, Colorado. We are very fortunate to have Dr. Patty only a few miles from our home. Many people have to rely on a veterinary teaching college to perform the extensive tests needed to diagnose epilepsy. Corey received a full seizural workup from Dr. Patty, which included a spinal tap and magnetic resonance imaging, referred to as an MRI of her brain. The cerebral spinal fluid was collected while Corey was under general anesthesia and submitted to the veterinary college in Fort Collins, Colorado for analysis. While still under anesthesia, Corey also had an MRI performed. This technique generated pictures of her brain. A brain tumor would have been revealed by the procedure. We carefully examined more than 50 MRIs with Dr. Patty as she reviewed them. The devastating diagnosis came back two days later. Corey has inherited epilepsy. The following Monday, we had Corey spayed because hormones such as estrogen can lower the threshold to seizures in parts of the brain. Corey had potassium bromide added to her drug therapy of phenobarbital, hoping that these two anticonvulsant drugs would result in better seizure control. Potassium bromide is found to have less side effects than phenobarbital when used long term. We hope that Corey's medication will eventually consist of only the potassium bromide. We continue to have Dr. Scott monitor Corey's blood levels of potassium bromide and phenobarbital every six weeks. As with all anti-seizure medications, the amount of drug given does not always correspond with the amount reaching the blood and the brain. The liver may be eliminating the drug before it reaches sufficient levels in the bloodstream. It is best to take these blood samples immediately before giving the anticonvulsant medication so the concentration of drug is measured when lowest. These blood tests show if the amount of drug given should be increased, decreased, or remain the same. Even when the levels are within their appropriate range, Corey will still have seizures. She usually experiences three seizures spread over a 12-hour period. However, the Memorial Day weekend of 1996, Corey suffered 32 documented seizures in a period of 52 hours. The situation was compounded by the absence of both vets who were out of town for the long weekend. We finally got the seizures under control after four separate doses of Valium were administered at an emergency animal clinic. A guarded 48-hour vigilance followed this frightening ordeal. We have added another drug to Corey's therapy, which is called chlorazepate. This drug is a type of oral Valium and is administered twice a day. What should you do if your standard schnauzer has a seizure? Watching Corey have a seizure is terrifying, especially since it is a dog we love. If the standard is a young puppy or lactating bitch, it should be seen by a veterinarian immediately. A single isolated seizure in an otherwise healthy adult dog does not usually require emergency veterinarian care, although an appointment should be scheduled promptly for a thorough workup. 
If there are multiple seizures in a day, emergency care is recommended without delay. When a standard schnauzer has a seizure, as difficult as it may be, it is important for the owner to remain calm. Panicking will not help your dog. The dog should be moved to a safe place, laid on a rug to minimize the chances of injury, and sharp items in the area should be removed to prevent the dog from harming itself. If possible, note the time of day, the length of the seizure, and observe carefully so that you can give your veterinarian a clear and accurate account of the event. Standards do not swallow their tongues during seizures, and owners should never put their hands near a seizuring dog's mouth. Many veterinarians believe that the length and severity of the post-ictal phase can be decreased by gently trying to calm and soothe your standard. Usually other animals in the household will ignore a dog having a seizure, but it is not wise to rely on this since occasional fatalities have been recorded. It is best to isolate the dog during the seizure and for a short time afterwards. It is important to remember that seizures by themselves are almost never fatal. The grotesque appearance of Corey's seizuring is not an expression of pain, nor does she remember what has happened after the incident. If a seizure was painful, Corey would not readily return to the place where she just experienced it. 60 to 70 percent of dogs are controlled on drugs, but that means one in three epileptic dogs have uncontrollable epilepsy. Status epileptus, a condition of continuous uncontrollable seizure activity, develops when the seizures occur in clusters or one right after another. Continuous seizures in the dog can lead to exhaustion, hypoglycemia, hypothermia, oxygen depletion, brain damage, and eventually death. Epilepsy is a horrible disorder that we must not hide. A breeder does not set out to produce an epileptic standard schnauzer. It is not a sin or the mark of a bad breeder. We should pardon those who do produce an epileptic and encourage them to admit its presence in their program. What does matter is what we do if we breed an epileptic dog. If we continue to ignore epilepsy, we will have neglected one of our most basic duties to the breed, the breed we profess to care about and love. If a standard schnauzer is diagnosed with primary epilepsy, it should not be bred, no matter how wonderful a showman, obedience dog, tracker, or representative of the breed the dog is. If a breeder is in doubt, assume a seizure is due to primary epilepsy. We must remove primary epileptics from our breeding programs. Do not repeat a breeding that produced an epileptic dog. Do not breed an epileptic's litter mates. Epilepsy can be treated but not cured, and the ideal anticonvulsant drug does not yet exist. Studies are continually underway to find new drug therapy for epilepsy. The Morris Animal Foundation is just one sponsor of this effort. Treatment is designed to control epilepsy by decreasing the frequency, duration, and severity of the seizures while minimizing the drug's side effects. In most cases, the dog must continue treatment for the rest of its life. Speaking from our experiences with Corey, we can honestly state that living with an epileptic dog is a psychological drain on a family, not only emotionally, but financially.